Hello, you beautiful people. So today I wanted to talk to you guys about some buy low and sell high players in points leagues. So it's currently week 8 of the NBA season, and I'm hoping this helps you guys target some players to trade for, and lets you know who you should trade away. So before we begin, feel free to like and subscribe for NBA and fantasy content, and I actually just made a Discord for the serious fantasy owners that want to discuss any fantasy or NBA stuff, so that link's going to be in the description. There's really great community in there, and I definitely recommend checking it out if you're interested. So with that being said, let's just jump right into the video. So you already know we're going to start with the player in the thumbnail, and he's actually in the buy low categories for this week. So, of course, it's going to be Devin Booker, and Devin Booker is just kind of someone that I've been advocating as a buy low candidate for the entirety of the season. It feels like, I mean, I'm just kind of repeating myself here, but like, you got to bet on Booker getting better, and a lot of people in my Discord actually recommended Booker as well, so shout out to you guys, you know who you are. But yeah, I mean, Booker is just too talented of a scorer to keep the numbers that he's at right now, and I feel like there's no way he doesn't improve once he gets used to Chris Paul and everything, like... There's just a big adjustment period when someone like Chris Paul joins your team. And the Suns have kind of just sort of been gearing their offense around Chris Paul. And that's not exactly the best case for Devin Booker. But, I mean, he's going to get used to it. He's a proven scorer. And I definitely think he's going to trend upwards soon. So I definitely think this is a great time to buy low on Devin Booker. So the second player is actually someone that I think you need to trade for like quickly if you want to get him at a buy low price, and it's going to be Carl Anthony Towns. So the only reason Carl Anthony Towns is even a buy low target is just because he's been out with the Rona, and once he gets back, he's going to solidify his position as a top 10 fantasy player again. So if you're interested in Carl Anthony Towns, I definitely think now is the best time to trade for him because once he gets going again, people are going to remember how good of a player he is, and you're not going to be able to get a good deal on him. So definitely a good time to trade low on Carl Anthony Towns because, like I said, I think he's going to finish the season as like a top 10 fantasy player, and it's just a really good time to get someone like that on your team. So with that being said, let's just move on to the next player. So the third buy low target for week 8 is actually one of my favorite players in the league, and it's going to be John ja Morant. Now, I feel like a lot of people are forgetting what John ja Morant was doing before he got hurt in like the first two weeks of the season. I mean, he was putting up ridiculous numbers. Like, it was absolutely insane. And I feel like there's more of that to come. Like, he's just slowly working his way back into things, just reintegrating himself into the Grizzlies lineup, getting healthy. And those things just take time, but I feel like once he figures it out, once he gets back to 100%, like he's going to go back to that form that we were seeing from him at the start of the season, and that's why I think it's a great time to buy low on him. So yeah, I mean, he's definitely trending upwards for me. Personally, I would definitely try to pick him up. I already have him on my roster, and I'd recommend you trade for him as well. So the next player on the list is actually going to be Chris Middleton. So after a great start to the season, Chris Middleton kind of seems to be on a bit of a cold streak right now, but I mean, we all know how good of a player Chris Middleton is, such an efficient scorer, man, and like, if you look at his recent game logs, he hasn't taken more than 10 shot attempts in like the past five games, and like, that's just not going to continue if the Bucks want to win games, so that's definitely going to start trending upwards, so it might be a good time to pick him up from like a, I don't know, like a panicking fantasy manager or something like that, so yeah, definitely a good time to pick him up before his value starts to increase again. And lastly in the buy low options is going to be someone that's been getting mentioned a lot in the comments and it's going to be MPJ or Michael Porter Jr. So he was also out for an extended period of time with the Rona and it seems like a lot of players are having trouble working their way back into the lineup after this and I feel like that's just something we're going to have to deal with this year. So yeah, you might as well take advantage and like use that to your benefit as much as you can and like Michael Porter Jr. people are wondering if Malone hates him or whatnot but like he's too talented of a player to not be starting for them and not get the minutes that he was getting originally so I think he's just working his way back in they're just they don't want to rush anything with him he is a young player with sort of an injury history he hasn't been injured since he entered the league but we all know about that back thing in college so yeah I mean he's just such a talented scorer that I feel like his numbers are due to increase very soon so I definitely try to buy low on him if you could and that's going to conclude the buy low portion of this video and next we're going to move on to the players that I think you should sell high on this week. So the first sell high player is someone that if he's on your team I would move him like this instant like pause the video and go trade this guy because I was just waiting for this sort of stretch from Al Horford because I actually had him on my fantasy team and he is just such a scrub for fantasy man and it's not really Al Horford's fault it's just like the situation he's in on the thunder they don't care about winning games for some reason Al only plays well if George Hill is out so once George Hill gets back I mean Al's value is going to decrease and he also just rests so many games because like he's old and the thunder don't care about winning so if you have Al Horford, just trade him, man. Like, he's finally had that good stretch that I've been waiting on all year, so you might as well trade him away and get as much value as you can. So with the next three players, the reason they're on this list is all very similar, and it's just because a starter from their team is currently out. So with Gary Trent Jr., I mean, obviously it's CJ McCollum, and I feel like CJ's going to be back soon. He's nearing the end of his timetable when he was going to be reevaluated. so the date's just getting nearer and nearer for Gary Trent Jr. and his fantasy value. He's a great player when CJ's not out because he's getting so many minutes, but when CJ comes back, he's really just irrelevant for the fantasy format, so I'd definitely try to move him if you have him, or, I mean, just try to package him in a two-for-one for a better player, but... 
yeah, I mean, you still have a bit of time with Gary Trent if you want to really stretch out his value, but I just feel like with CJ's return looming, you might as well just get rid of Gary Trent now while you can. So similarly is Naz Reed, and his value is inflated right now because Towns has been out, but Towns is going to be back in the next like few games or so, and when he comes back, you can pretty much just drop Naz Reed. Like, he is not going to have any fantasy value because Towns is just going to be eating up all the minutes, and there's really just not a lot of opportunity for Naz Reed. So Naz Reed is another one that, like, I would try to get rid of him soon if you have him on your team, just because, like, Towns is coming back even sooner than CJ, so it's really just a great time to trade him. And, yeah, next is going to be Norman Powell, and... While he's not playing underneath like a superstar like CJ or Carl Anthony Towns, he is playing underneath OG Ananobi, who has been out for a bit, and OG is due to be back soon as well. And like, I mean, I could hold on to Norm for a few more games with OG just to see if he can keep up these numbers, but my gut's telling me that he's not going to be able to sustain this production. So yeah, I wouldn't trade Norm like right away. I'd just wait a few games to see how he's playing with OG, but just make sure you don't wait too long because then his value is going to decrease. And finally, lastly, if you made it this far into the video, you already know what to do. I'm going to have you guys drop a W in the comments. And the last player I want to talk about in sell high is going to be Drew Holiday. So the only reason I think Drew Holiday is a sell high player, like, don't get me wrong, Drew Holiday is a great fantasy player, but he's just been on such a hot stretch these past, like, six games or so. He's shooting, like, 70% from the field or something stupid like that. So I just feel like that's a great reason to trade high on him. Just because, like, I saw someone mention Drew Holiday for Ben Simmons can't remember if it was a category or a points league but I feel like if you can get Ben Simmons for Drew Holiday that is just a great return and yeah he's going to conclude the sell high players for week eight so I want to thank you guys very much for watching leave your guys sell high and buy low players in the comments below and I hope you guys all have a great day